أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين والجنة بالموحدين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفعينا وسندنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب اسرح لي صدري ويسر لأمري وحل الأقدة من لسانه يفقى قولي اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا اللهم رزقنا فهما يا ذا الجلال والإكرام فيقول الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير عن أبي دردا رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاة في المسجد الحرام مئة ألف صلاة وصلاة في المسجد بألف صلاة وصلاة في بيت المقدس خمسمائة صلاة We praise the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having gathered us in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this hour, this moment of Yawm al-Jum'ah. And we pray and we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite mercy grant us the understanding and the wisdom of the words that I'm going to share with you today in this hour, in this moment of time. And we pray and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us our duas, our supplication, and our respected listeners of Radio Voice of the Cape, that we pray and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you prosperity in your life, in your life to come, insha'Allah, and everything that is good in this world and in the year after. It is with great pain that I have to stand in front of you here today in the comfort of your homes, the comfort of our masajids, dress in finery, the best way that we could ever be dressed on this day, this hour of Yomul Jumar. But our hearts bleeds and it cries out at the thought of what is taking place in Al Ardul Muqaddasha, Al Ardul Muqaddasa, Bayt al Magdis, Masjid al Aqsa al Mubarak, the Holy Land. Jerusalem, Palestine, and the furthest mosque has been identified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran. And this is the land of our patriarch, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And this is the place from which our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was allowed to journey from through the seven heavens in the furthest region of the cosmos of the galaxy to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was known the night of the Mi'raj and this is the place that was the Qibla in the early stages of Islam. And this is the place that was the abode and refuge 
of all the prophets of all the anbiya alayhim salatu was salam from the beginning of nabi adam alayhi salatu was salam this is the place from where the wahi revelation even descended upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the land of resurrection of Mahshar. This is the land or the place where the blessed Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led the salah with the closest angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind him. Following 124 thousands of prophets and messengers standing behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in salah. And this is the land which is home to the third holiest site in Islam, the third haram of Islam, Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. And so my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the heart pains and cries at the thought of what is taking place at this moment of time in the blessed land of Palestine. A site that is Islamic, and has been Islamic and Muslim for over 1400 years ago. Today it cries out to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for yaud. And weeping and it is crying. And it has been doing so since 1967 when the Israeli occupation began. As its sanctity, the sacredness and holiness is violated repeatedly. Al-Quds, Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak cries out to the Ummah. It cries out to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where are the Muslims? Where are the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It cries out, we are Salahuddin. When is another Salahuddin coming to liberate Masjid al-Aqsa from the hands of the Zionist regime? And so when it cries out, where is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That means it's me and you included because we are all the Ummah. Of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the rights and the honor of Muslims who lived. In its vicinity and worshipped there for over 1400 years. Are violated repeatedly. Al-Quds and Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak cries out. To the Ummah at large. And as it cries out, our condition remains indifferent. Whilst it cries out, we're not even, even lifting a hand or making a dua for the liberation of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. And whilst it cries out to us, to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we don't even make an effort to go into the Quran and to look up and to see the significance of Masjid al-Aqsa and how Allah ta'ala identify, speak about this great place of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. No! Do we delve into the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is so numerous, that speaks about the beauty of the place we lack behind making an effort to look up on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that speaks about the beauty of Palestine. 
We have become desensitized to what is taking place in, Bel in Palestine, in Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak specifically. The constant seeing and hearing of violence in the vicinity of Masjid al-Aqsa has made us indifferent to what is taking place. Blood and killings and violation they have little impact on our hearts. And when we see something happening on media and social media, we are very quick to say something or to do something. But the moment we have cooled down, while the onslaught is still continuing, the violence is still continuing against the Palestinian people. And whilst we have been cooling down, we slowly start to forget our responsibility towards Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. And our younger generation, it says that it has been born and nurtured in the way that the Israeli occupation is seen as the norm of, the, of today. We have become desensitized to the issue. And it is said, and it is said, but yet this is the case. Our younger generations are growing up with, without realizing that along with the two harams, that which of Mecca al muqarrama and Medina al munawwara Masjid al-Aqsa is also a sacred Islamic site. But however, when we look at the corpus of Islamic studies or literature, the Quran and the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see the fadail, the benefits of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak time and time and again. And we have run short where our younger generation is concerned. And it is sad to say, that our madaris, our Islamic schools, whether it's primary school or whether it is high school, our Islamic institutions, Allah, it's sad to think and it's sad to say that we have missed out and that we have now seen that Al-Quds, the history of Al-Quds, the history of Palestine has not even until today at this moment of time, in this year, in this era and period of time that we are living in, has not even yet become part of the syllabi of our schools. Madaris first on the agenda. Al-Quds Al Al is an issue that is not being dressed in Madaris. And yet, when me and you teach our children the importance of Salah, where did Salah start? When we are to teach our children in Madaris about Qibla, how do we teach our children in Madaris of what is Qibla or where? was the first direction of the Muslims within Salah. That's why when me and you go into Salah now for Jumu'ah, we are going to make every Salah that we are performing. Even it is that we are facing in direction of the Haram of the Kaaba, we should remember at all times the direction of Al-Quds, will always also be our direction. Because that was the first Qibla of the Muslims. Our Islamic schools, the history of Palestine as until today has not become or has not been part of the syllabi of the schools. The less me and you think about it, the less me and you talk about it, the less me and you makes it to away within our family households, within our community, the less 
We speak about it even in school. The result is we start lacking behind and start focusing on what is important in our lives. And so as believers, we have a responsibility. We have a due responsibility. As the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have that responsibility constantly and at all times to speak and to be focused on Palestine. And as I've mentioned numerous ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I had what in the glorious Quran that Allah speaks about the significance of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy says, إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْصَى الَّذِي بَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهُ لِنُرِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا A place, a place that has been blessed by Allah. The city and the surroundings been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The holy land of Palestine, Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak, was liber liberated by al farooq who as we know as who? Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anu ajma'een. He liberated it from the crusaders. Liberated from crusaders by Salahuddin al-Ayyubi. So Umar was there. Then Salahuddin al-Ayyubi and he came. Because Salahuddin al-Ayyubi journeyed the entire Bilhad al-Sham. One of the riwayats of one of the Sahaba says, after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he could not stay on one place anymore. Because the Nabi wasn't there anymore. And he would say, what's the purpose and reason for me to remain behind or to stay in Medina tul Munawwara? The Nabi is not here anymore. I came as a warrior. And having accepted Islam, I came in as a warrior, accepting Islam, came in as a warrior during the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what else is there for me to do? And he will say, Sahaba, tell me, give me something else to do, then I will remain in Medina. He says, there's nothing for me remaining in Medina. So I will continue. I will continue sacrificing my life for the cause of Islam, with the result, Bilad Sham was the land conquered by Al Ayyub Salahuddin Al Ayyubi. We look, for example, Ayyub Sultan. He came and he took and he conquered the Tatars. But what does what does it? In our era and period of time, what does it have now? Who will support Palestine now? Who will support or respond to the call of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak crying out with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salatu wa salam? Will we allow ourselves to let down the blessed land of Palestine, of Masjid Al-Aqsa, Al-Ardul Anbiya. The land of the Anbiya, of the Prophets and the Messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will we allow ourselves to let down this blessed land while the Israeli occupation works in their way? To die is it. Will we sit back and watch how the Israeli regime by force are taking every house, every inch of ground that is the land of the Palestinians that belongs to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salatu wa salam. And Abi Dhar radiallahu anhu called, Kultu ya Rasulallah, 
اي مسجد وضع في الارض اول قال المسجد الحرام قال قلت ثم اي قال مسجد الاقصى قلت كم كان بينهما قال أربعون سنه ثم اينما ادركتك الصلاه بعد فصلوا فان الفضل فيه مسجد الاقصى is the first of the two qiblas because the nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions adopted Masjid Al-Aqsa is the first Qibla. And they pray towards it. They pray towards it. Towards Masjid Al-Aqsa for many months. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them. Until Allah ordered them to pray towards the Kaaba. قَدَ نَرَا تَقَلُّبَ وَجَهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ ฟะลันวะลียันนะกะวะชะตระฟะลันวะลียันนะกะกิบลาตันตรดาฟะวะลิวะจะกะชะตระลมัสยิดิลฮารามวะฮัยซุมาอันตุมฟะวะลูฮ
And why do we allow ourselves today to give up Masjid Al-Aqsa as the third holiest Masjid for the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why have we become so desensitized as far as the Haram in Palestine is concerned? Why it has not become a topic within our family, within our household? Why is it not a topic of discussion and awareness within our madaris, within our Islamic institution, within our Islamic primary schools or high schools? The question is, why do we lack behind? Is it that we are so much involved with so many things that is so much, so much, so immaterial to us, less of importance really to us, that we are so much focused on that, that we start to forget the reality of what, ha what is happening to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salatu wasalam. And so the ayat in Bani Israel, the first ayat, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi, this Quranic verse is evidence that Masjid al-Haram and Masjid al-Aqsa atun. Because Allah says, the two together, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylam min al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa. Allah turned these two and Allah named them by name. This is how Allah Ta'ala identifies it within the glorious Quran. And so Allah turns Masjid al-Haram and Masjid al-Aqsa. And that Masjid al-Haram and Masjid al-Aqsa are siblings. Siblings meaning that the faiths are equal and that they must be equally supported. And so much focus that you give unto the Haram of Makkah, you have to give that focus on Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak. And so Masjid Al-Aqsa is a sign in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a Quranic course. Because every Muslim, every believer must memorize the glorious Quran. And was also preserve Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak. So who is protecting Masjid Al-Aqsa today? While well, the Israeli occupation continues to dig tunnels beneath it. Who will support Masjid Al-Aqsa today when the Israeli occupation has built a synagogue in the tunnels under Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak in a museum called the Court Convey of Generations. Who will support Masjid Al-Aqsa today when the Israeli occupation took control of Masjid Al-Aqsa, the gates of Masjid Al-Aqsa, by armed force of forces and permits access to whomsoever they please and deny access to whomsoever they please. Today, the Israeli occupation denies access, oh, uh, subhanallah, to over three million Palestinian Muslims living in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Who will support Masjid Al-Aqsa today? When the Israeli occupation converted one of the Salah areas in Masjid Al-Aqsa into Israeli police station. Who will support Masjid Al-Aqsa today while the Israeli occupation, the army, the intelligence, the police force, stole Masjid Al-Aqsa on a daily basis and desecrate its pure grounds with the source. Even some of the Israeli politicians, religious figures, judges, and hundreds of Israeli community members stole Masjid Al-Aqsa weekly on a weekly basis. And what they do do they do, do they? The Talmudic prayers in the Haram of Al-Quds. Who will support Masjid Al-Aqsa today while some Israeli occupation officials 
call for dividing Masjid al-Aqsa unacceptably between the Muslims and the Jews. The division even of the Ibrahimi Masjid in Hebron. So if you've been in Al-Quds, if you have been in Hebron, if you have been in the Ibrahimi Masjid, you will know what I am speaking about. You will know who is buried there. If you have been in the Haram of Al-Quds, subhanallah, historically, the Haram of Al-Quds has more history to the history of Makkah al mukarrama Study it and you will see it. That is why it is known as, as, as Al-Ardul Anbiya, the land of the Anbiya, alayhimu salatu wa meaning of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many prophets and messengers are buried in Bilhad al-Sham. And if you journey, you will see it. And that's why my opinion is always, my opinion is always because of my passion for the history. Don't go to Kuz if you don't understand the history. Study the place before you go. Because then you know where you're going to. You know where you need to sit. You know what you need to do when you're in the Haram of Al-Quds. Then you will gain the benefit of the places that you are going to. Who will support Masjid Al-Aqsa today while the Israeli occupation claim Masjid Al-Aqsa's interior grounds are only public grounds and should be subject to the Hebrew municipality of Jerusalem? These are all things that I'm just sharing with you, giving to you in verbatim things what is currently happening in Palestine. And the question always comes, what are me and you going to do as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salatu wa salam? Who will support Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak today while the Israeli occupation have killed dozens, hundreds, and injured hundreds of people in Masjid al-Aqsa even in the past year? And the blood of these martyrs is embracing the ground of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. And you know what? and complain to Allah Ta'ala of the brutality of the Israeli occupation. May Allah grant us the understanding, insha'Allah Ta'baraka wa Ta'ala. Masjid al-Aqsa is the gate from where the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in the night of the Mi'araj. Seven heavens, the Sitratul Muntaha, the question is, will we ignore this remarkable prophetic strategy of Rasulullah given unto him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So there's a number of ahadith. But we need to be positive. We need to be supportive when it comes to the Palestinian cause. And we need to make an effort and we need to make time to listen to programs, to go and learn the sacredness, significance, and the greatness of this place of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak and the land of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. And so I remind myself first, and all of you, that Palestine Masjid al-Aqsa has been entrusted to us. And the least we must do to support them is what the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. If you cannot go for salah in Masjid al-Aqsa, then send some oil to be used for its lambs 
it will be as if he has prayed in it. Then some oil, so the lanterns can burn, so there's light. Obviously today, you don't need to send oil in. They don't use that anymore. It's electricity. Alhamdulillah, they have never load shedding. <laughs> Barak, place is blessed. The only time they perhaps have the load shedding, when the Israeli regime comes and says, let us cut off the electricity supply to the Palestinian people. The water supply to the Palestinian people. And now we're crying and we're moaning. What is wrong with this government? We don't have electricity. We're forever in load shedding. Then it is a water story. Subhanallah. Palestinian people have been going through this for decades. Yet they make their salah. Yet they will stand in front of an armed tanker for the protection what belongs to them and the protection of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. They do not sit down and wait when the light is going on. No. Because they know their sacrifices and their rewards lie only and with only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy, may Allah ta'ala grant victory and liberation to the Palestinian people and our Muslim brethren wherever, right around the globe, wherever they find themselves in difficulty, may Allah bring ease to them, inshallah. And may Allah ta'ala grant us all one day to make salah in a free and liberated مسجد الأقصى فلسطين إن شاء الله تبارك وتعالى وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين having said that just a reminder tomorrow Saturday tomorrow when is it is day tomorrow إن شاء الله at Darul Islam Hall in Saudi State the Al Quds Foundation SA we having the Palestinian Maharajan Al Tifl Al Aqsa is a Palestinian saving network. We have a whole day program at Darul Islam High School, inshallah. Uh, please do come out and support the event, inshallah. We, have sell we are selling vouchers for, you know, mixed girls and Gatsby's, etc. All the proceeds will go to the people within Palestine, inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. There will also be live link up into West Bank and in Gaza and in the Haram of Al-Quds as well. So may Allah ta'ala grant us success dunya and akhirah, inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam. Yeah, uh, just one reminder. Salatul Layl, tomorrow evening, will commence at 10 o'clock, inshallah. Salatul Layl, tomorrow evening at 10 10 o'clock, inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.